Right, so we're going to come back now and have a look at the carbon-13 spectrum. Now, in the carbon-13 spectrum that we have, ordinarily what I would do is I'd count the number of carbons in my molecule. And once I count the carbons in my molecule, I would then count the number of carbon peaks I have here. And I would say that my molecule is either clean or not clean, or I have some extra peaks or not. And I'm gonna count the carbons that I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 carbons. Right, so I have 18 carbons in this particular structure. Uh, and I want to see whether or not I have 18 carbons here. And there's one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to leave that out. Six, seven, eight. Now, I'm going to expand that. 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So the purpose of me counting like that is to show you that I have more peaks than I actually should when I count the number of carbons here. Now, the reason for that is that my fluorine couples my carbon, right? So we're dealing with, in this molecule, another NMR active nucleus, right? So this is an advanced uh, course in NMR. So in our undergrad up until now, we've been dealing with one nucleus, either carbon-13 or, or hydrogen or protons. But now we're dealing with an additional nucleus, which is fluorine, and fluorine is also NMR active, right? Being NMR active, it's going to couple the carbons directly bonded to it. And that carbon directly bonded to it is going to be coupled with a very large coupling constant of about 250 hertz. Right? So that chlorine is going to couple this carbon with about 250 hertz. Now I'm going to cheat a bit here because I actually know what, where those carbons lie. Right? So it should be deshielded somewhere around 150, 160 or so. So in this particular region. Right? And if I look at this first peak here, the most deshielded of these peaks around here, I'm going to just run my cursor through. And you can see when I go to the next peak, I have roughly a coupling constant of about 250 or 260 hertz. Right? If I look at this one here and I run it through to that, I have another coupling constant of about 240 hertz that I have here. Right? Now I have two fluorine atoms and two of those carbon atoms. So the fluorine couples that carbon with about 200 and something hertz, and that fluorine couples that something with about 200 and something hertz. So generally the carbon directly bonded to the fluorine would be around 220 to 250 hertz, right? And you can see that this doublet, that, so this peak and this peak is actually a doublet. So what I'm seeing here is a doublet, either that or that. And what I'm seeing here is also a doublet. This peak and this peak is a doublet. And that is either that or that. I can't say which it is now. In tomorrow's session, you'll see how I actually can say which it is. Right? But at the moment, you can say it's either that carbon or that carbon, which is coupling to a uh, 200. And, so in this case, it's about 250 hertz or so. Uh, and in this case, it's also roughly around um, 260 hertz or 250 hertz or so. Right, so in both cases, it's around 250 hertz for those two carbons. My carbonyl peak, I can see that it's intact here around 190 or so. So that's my carbonyl peak. So all my de-shielded peaks, and you must see the de-shielded peaks are due to the electronegative atoms. So the two fluorine atoms are taken care of. There's two big doublets that I see here. The carbonyl peak is taken care of here. I got two carbons next to nitrogen atoms, and both are singlets. So that's a singlet and that's a singlet. So if I'm gonna look at my spectrum, it's probably this carbon here and this carbon here, because those are the next deshielded ones, this carbon here and that carbon there, over the two carbons next to the nitrogen. And then I have a singlet peak here, and I also have a singlet peak here, all right? If I look at my carbon uh, around here, I have, there's a peak that I can see here, and that's maybe one of them. And then there's a possibility here and a possibility here. So I actually don't know at this stage what this peak and that peak is. So those two peaks, I'm going to try and find either that one or that one. I know one is probably definitely that one, right? In tomorrow's lecture, I'll show you how we know exactly what, what those peaks are. 
when we do some correlations to the protons in the ring, right? When I do use the 2D spectra. So I sort of have all my singlet carbons. Let's look at the protonated carbons. All right, so that's my protonated carbons. Now I said a fluorine couples the carbon directly bonded to it at about 220 hertz. We can expect as we go out of the ring or further away from the carbon, the coupling constant gets reduced and reduced. If I go to this ortho position here, so this fluorine and this hydrogen ortho to that and look at the carbon on it, so this carbon here would be expected to have a doublet in the region of about 20 hertz, right? And if I go meta to that, I'd expect a coupling constant of about eight hertz, right? So I'm gonna look at the doublets that I have and see if I can actually make sense. So I'm looking at a carbon here and a carbon here and a carbon here and a carbon here. In line with symmetry, I know that this carbon and this carbon should be the same, right? But this carbon and this carbon should be different. So we're looking at ideally three peaks, one peak here for these two, and one peak for that carbon and one peak for that carbon. Three carbon peaks with a coupling constant of about 20 hertz, right? I'm just gonna exaggerate this a bit for you. Can you see if I run my cursor and calculate my coupling constant here, I'm getting about 24 hertz, all right? And if I do the same here, about 22 hertz, and if I do the same here, about 25 hertz, all right? So each of these doublets must be due to either that carbon, that carbon, and these two, as I said, are similar because they are equivalent. And because the intensity is higher, I can say that this doublet that I'm seeing here of about 22 hertz is probably due to these two carbon atoms here. And this carbon and that carbon resonance, or so these two carbon resonance must be due to that one and that one, all right? I don't know which one just yet, but tomorrow's session, we can probably use some 2D correlations and determine whether this resonance is either that carbon uh, or, or that carbon or that carbon resonance is either that or that. So I can actually assign these carbons here to that and that. And the other thing I want to do here is now look for the other carbons. Can you see? I also have some peaks, these doublets here. Now let's have a look at what those couplings are. Right. Um, I'm going to look at this one first because this is more intense than the other two. And can you see that this resonance is around eight to 10 Hertz, right? And I said eight to 10 Hertz will be for the metacoupled ones. And you can see this intensity is also twice as high. So it's more likely that these two carbon atoms, eight to 10 Hertz is due to this particular carbon atom. So you see for these two carbon atoms and those two carbon atoms, I didn't need to do any correlations. I can immediately see what they are just by looking at the intensity of the peak and knowing something about the coupling to the fluorine and I can identify which those are. So I, was easy, I could very easily identify this particular one as being due to these two carbons and this particular resonance being due to these two carbons. And then if I look at the other meta ones, there's a meta carbon here to that fluorine atom Right, so if I'm looking at the metacarbon to that fluorine atom, and I look here, there's another one that I'm seeing here with about eight to 10 hertz, all right? And that eight to 10 hertz, I could probably say, is due to this carbon on this particular ring, all right? Now, this is a singlet carbon. Now, remember I said before, we can actually determine which, uh, which uh, carbon that is. All right, if I look at that carbon spectrum that we had before and I now measure this coupling constant, it's about eight to 10 hertz that I'm seeing for this doublet. And the singlet carbon here must be the one that's due here. So remember I said previously, it's either this carbon or this carbon. I was trying to see which the part this was. So now I know for sure that this carbon resonance that you're seeing around 129 or so is due to this carbon atom because it's coupled to this fluorine. All right, so I can actually assign this here to that particular carbon resonance. I've also got another doublet here that I can look at, and this is much smaller, all right? So this is about 5.68 ppm, all right? So this 
small coupling that I'm seeing here is due to something that's not ortho, that's not meta. It's got to be something that is a little bit further away, right? So this carbon that you're seeing here, it is coupling to something, but a bit further away. And if I look at my aromatic ring, the only thing I have further away from a metacarbon is the paracarbon, right? So I've got a paracarbon here, and I've got a paracarbon here, but this is a protonated resonance. And because it's a protonated resonance, it can't be either of those and that. And the next possible carbon that I have from there with, a, with such a small couple, coupling constant is probably that proton or that proton. So we can actually visit this particular resonance tomorrow and see what this protonated resonance is, you know, that, that's giving us that particular coupling constant uh, to see how it's actually coupling with such a small coupling that we have here. So we can interrogate that a bit tomorrow by looking at some other correlations in this molecule. Right, so the point I wanted to make today is that the carbons directly bonded to fluorine, we can actually identify, and I showed you those big couplings that we had in this region here. And I also wanted to show you that we can also identify our orthocoupled protons. These are orthocoupled because they're about 20 or so hertz, 20 to 25 hertz. And then our metacoupled protons here and here. And you can see that when I have this particular spectrum that I'm showing you that I have the two for those two protons. And I also have um, some coupling here and some coupling here. And I'm looking to find another proton and I, I'm not seeing any other metacouple proton. I'm only seeing one metacouple proton here, right? So and that's this particular one. So we'll need to properly interrogate this particular resonance to see what this is tomorrow uh, to probably find out some information about that particular resonance using 2D NMR spectra. And you also have some other peaks that you can see are just singlet peaks, right? So those singlet peaks that we have won't couple, so they're not near the fluorine atoms. So all these carbon atoms that we've looked at were near the fluorine atoms and all the other singlet peaks that you're seeing that, that, and that are not next to fluorine. So it's probably going to be the protonated peaks of that carbon, that carbon, that carbon, and that carbon. Right? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. As I said, we'll discuss this tomorrow and see what this is, because this is also has some slight coupling that you can actually see here. All right? So it also has some slight coupling, what that is. And so I'll give you a hint. It's closer to a fluorine atom, it's probably this carbon here. But we'll de determine that tomorrow in tomorrow's 2D session. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna count my carbons again. And once I count my carbons again, I'm gonna go back and look at all my resonances and see what I have and what I don't have, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 carbons that I need to to interrogate. I'm going to start with this region first, up from here right to here, and see how many carbons. And that's one for the carbonyl, two because of the doublet, three because of the doublet, four, and five, the two carbon nitrogens, right? So five resonances there. And then look at the other part. So five, six, seven, I know this is a doublet. So it's not two resonances, there's a doublet here, a very small doublet, and I'll give you a hint for tomorrow. So five, six, seven, eight, a doublet, nine because of a doublet, 10, 11, 12, doublet, 13, doublet, 14, doublet. Now these two are more intense because they're two. So 14, 15, because they're intense, they're two carbons, 16, because they are two carbons. So we've got 16 carbon atoms, and I've got this carbon here that I said must be this 4A here, that's 17. So I need one more carbon atom. I don't have this particular carbon. That's the only carbon that I didn't pick up, this particular one that I'm showing you here, right? And that can either be maybe this carbon or this carbon. I've got some slight peaks here. So I'm gonna look 
and interrogate this more tomorrow in my 2D spectrum to see whether this peak here is either this or this, or maybe not picked up. Maybe it's neither of those, because these two are slightly lost in the noise to see whether it's this carbon or that carbon or whether I can't pick it up at all. And then to see if I have all my 18 carbon peaks. All right, and I want this for my thesis. So I can do exactly the same thing that I did previously here. I can analyze my spectrum, pick my peaks, and I showed you how to do picking of the peaks. All right, so I'm gonna pick each of these here. And you can see, because it's a doublet, I'm seeing my two peaks. It's a doublet, I'm seeing my two peaks. That, I'll expand that just now and show you a bit better. See, that's a doublet, that's a doublet, that's a doublet. And then peak all of these here because I want four peaks here. And I've got two peaks that I'm picking here as well. All right, and remember, I also got this one that I said is 4A. And I don't know whether it's that or that, but I'm gonna pick them anyway. I'm gonna pick the small one here. And you'll see that in some cases, like you can actually see in this particular region, this particular one gets picked up. So not that one. <coughs> so, this, so some peaks might not be able to get picked up from the noise. And this is one good example here. So although I try to, to pick it up, it's not gonna pick up. So I can't differentiate this peak from the noise and even that one as well, right? So I can't differentiate those two from the noise. And uh, so that won't be picked up by this particular um, sample, all right? So I want to put this into my thesis. I choose something, so I want to see this nice and clearly and show my examiner, this is my carbon spectrum, and these are all the peaks that I want. So I can choose to export this. All right, I'll save it on my desktop for now. Um, I've got a carbon 13 here of my protoquinolone, and I'm gonna save it. And maybe I want to maybe make this, um, Okay, I'll just leave it as that carbon-13 fluorine. All right, and then I'm going to go and look at what I've got. That's ready for my thesis. I can copy and paste. But just in case, I wanted to show someone something specific in my... So I wanted to show my examiner or my the reader or my supervisor something specific. I wanted to show them each of the doublets. So I wanted to expand this region here just to show them that these are actually doublets. They're not just regular peaks. So this is a nice sort of picture that I can actually use to show people um, what's going on with the in terms of doublets and, and so forth. All right, so it's a nice picture. I can clearly see each of these orthocoupled doublets. I can clearly see each of these uh, metacoupled doublets. I can also see this long range coupling here. And I can see a metacoupled doublet here. So there's also a nice picture. So I might want to export this particular picture as well. I can export this as a carbon-13 fluoroquinoline. I can now say expanded, all right? And I can save this on my desktop as well, just to show you. So this is another picture that we have. And you see, this is a nice one that I can actually use to show my examiner or in a presentation. I can actually talk about these orthocoupled doublets and metacouple doublets and long range coupling and another meta quaternary carbon. I can talk all about these in my, my presentation that I wanna make for my honest talk right now. All right, so I think I'm gonna go back to what we should have covered today. So I've shown you all of these things. I went through all of these things here and I've showed you how to process both a proton and a carbon 13 NMR spectrum and how to get camera ready uh, figures for your theses or your presentations, All right? So that's what you've covered in today's session. And tomorrow, we're gonna look at the 2D spectra, I'll look at COSI spectra, HMBC spectra, and HSQC spectra, and show you, um, see my battery is a bit low now, and show you how to uh, use 2D spectra. So thanks guys. Um,
I'm going to stop sharing there. I'm going to take maybe one question if anyone has questions because my battery is about to die. Anybody with a burning question that they need to ask? No questions. Good. So I'll see you same time uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. And we'll go through the 2D NMR spectra. Have a good day, guys. I'll make these videos available on the Moodle website. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.